This is Dr. Harsha from Mechanical and Industrial Engineering Department, IIT Ruruki. I am going to deliver my lecture 15th on the course of the strength of materials and this course is developed under the National Program on uh, Technological Enhanced Learning. As we have you know like discussed in the previous lecture that if we have a bar irrespective of whether it has a uniform cross section or it has you know like the linearly varying cross section that means you see if you have the tapered bar then what kind of you know like the stress uh, the, this uh, generation is there due to, the, uh, due to the application of load or what the strains are there in that that kind of you know like discussion which we have already you know like made in the previous lecture and we found that if bar which is a composition of uh, the different segments uh, then instead of you know like uh, going uh, to check uh, the different deformation, we can simply go for the integration. So, you see, you know, like uh, even uh, we can adopt the two different approaches in that one, you know, like just uh, take the individual segments as we discussed, and for individual segments, since you see, you know, like at the extreme to corner, the tensile loading was there. So, due to that loading, what the ten deformation is there, and since uh, this deformation we assume that it is the elastic deformation, so what the individual deformations are there in these special components. Uh, calculate those deformation by this particular formula delta is nothing but equals to uh, uh, load p into l divided by a into e p is nothing but the applied load l is the effective length of that particular segment divided by this uh, effective area for that particular segment and the young's modulus of elasticity so if we are calculating these uh, delta for individual segments like delta 1 delta 2 whatever the segments are there and if you sum up those things delta 1 plus delta 2 plus uh, those things it will give you the total deformation in that uh, bar instead of doing that because you know like it is not the per per perfect uh, you know like uh, the method what we are doing here we are simply taking a segment small which has you know like the depth or the width of d dx in particular x direction because we are applying the load in x direction only because these are the uniaxial loading so if you are just taking the width of dx and if we know that the whatever the deformation is occurring in that dx segment is a small delta okay just calculate that and then integrate for the entire length of beam 0 to l and because you see we have a uniform structure and whatever you see you know like and we are assuming that the stresses which are developing these are uniform all across the body and whatever the deformations are there it is symmetric all uh, towards the body you see because we are applying the load symmetrically so with those assumptions so we can simply put the integration and by taking you know like integration of all those things right from 0 to l we can get the final deformation so this was you know like uh, we uh, this uh, this kind of uh, you know analysis which we have done for uh, a uniform cross section bar or the tapered section bar in the tapered section bar also we assume that we have a small segment in between those you know like the small and the uh, bigger diameter and you see you know like we, we assume that it is uh, at a distance of x from the smaller diameter and we calculated the deformation for that and once we have the deformation simply by taking the integration part of uh, all those you know like kind of analysis from 0 to l we are getting the deformation and that too you see you know like uh, we can easily get the deformation because we are, we are assuming here and this is the biggest assumption in those analysis that whatever the deformation is occurring in those uh, you know like under the application of this tensile loading is the elastic deformation and that is why the Hooke's law is valid within this particular part. So, with those you know like uh, kind of analysis uh, we assume that uh, this uh, bar is putting horizontally that means there is no weight uh, we are not considering any weight. But if I am let us say if I am keeping this bar vertically means if I am hanging that bar irrespective of whether it has a cro uniform cross section or it has a tapered cross section. Then you see we need to consider not only the external applied force which because it is you know, like uh, we are applying this particular load apart from that we need to consider what is the weight and what is the you see where this weight is applying means where is the center of uh, you know like the gravity of these things means where is the cz you know like uh, of this particular body once you locate the cz of the body you need to apply the weight and you see you know like then only we can simply calculate the deformation with the application of both you know like uh, the load simultaneously means the applied load plus the self weight load and divided by if you uh, divide the area that which is the effective area for the uh, this uh, load concerned then we can get the default uh, the stresses and once you have the stresses you also have the strain because you see whatever the extension is there you can measure that strain the, the, this particular deformation and you can get the strain so you see you can simply set up the relation meaning is pretty simple that actually if you put 
whether you say you know, like the uniform cross section bar or the tapered cross section bar, always uh, you need to consider the self weight of the bar and then with the consideration of the self weight, you need to apply both load, external applied load and the self load simultaneously to calculate the final deformation and once you have the deformation, you can easily get the other parameters because here also we are assuming that these whatever the deformation is occurring that is uniform and this is under the elastic way means elastic reason. So, that kind of discussion you know like which we have made in the previous lecture and in this now then we found that if we since you know like we have a single bar, but if we have more than one bar then what will happen? So, for that you see again as we have discussed in the previous cases that actually okay one bar is there in the horizontal or vertical with the consideration of applied external, uh, external applied load or the self laid all those kind of stresses and strains are you know occurring within those structure and what exactly the relations are there within those things. So, apart from that now what we are going to discuss that okay we have a composite beam in which there are more than one bar of a uniform cross section. Again in that bar maybe you will find that more than one diameter is there of the bar, but if we are simply going for an individual bar then, the bar, then we will find that it has a uniform cross section all across the length right from 0 to L. So, now you see in this like and then we, we are going to discuss about the thermal stresses that what will happen if we have the thermal stresses as we have discussed in the previous cases that you see you know like uh, if we have you know just if you remind that that if we have a constant load and under the constant load if you know like if you are increasing the temperature then there is a phenomena is occurring and that phenomena we discussed as the creep. So, this kind of relations uh, we have already made and we have already set up the relationship in between you know like stress and strain if the different kind of materials are there or if the different kind of loadings are there means what kind of interactions are there in between the loading. So, here it is now the thermal stresses in the ther as far as the thermal stresses are concerned thermal stresses can come you know like uh, under the application of the normal uh, kind of loading in which uh, it can be of uh, tensile stresses or in ca it can be of uh, compressive stresses. So, if I am taking a compound bar compound bar means you see it has more than one bar, but uh, you know like it is in the composite nature. So, in a certain application it is necessary to use the combination of the elements or the bars. Uh, made from the different material and each material perform a different function because uh, whatever the extensions are going on or we can say whatever the deformation or distortion will happen in the material it is due to the property of the material. Let us say if I have a two different bar one is mild steel and one is copper and if you apply let us say 10 Newton bar then definitely whatever the deformation income uh, will come in the extension part will be surely different because it depends on what the modulus of elasticity is there and how it and what the ductility is there and we are always measuring the ductility by percentage elongation. So, how much percentage elongation is there in those kind of material corresponding ductilities are there and then we can say that you know like all different materials they are exhibiting the different kind of deformation in those you know like due to these models of elasticity. So, here if, if I am having a composite bar which is you know like having more than one bar and even both all bars which are existing in this composite or compound bar have the different materials. So, we if we are applying the load then again we need to assume certain thing and definitely you see you know, like uh, if you want to you know like uh, calculate certain uh, different uh, elastic properties or elastic constant as we have discussed like the shear modulus of elasticity, bulk modulus of elasticity or this Young's modulus of elasticity or even Poisson ratio then we need to put uh, the uh, cross bars all across the you know like two ends and then we need to apply the constant load and then kind of analysis will be happen. So, here you see you know like uh, in the our head you know like the electric cables or the transmission lines are there which are you know like flowing from our head then uh, for example, it is often convenient to carry the current in a set of copper wires surrounding the steel wires. That means you know like uh, always we are uh, just taking the good conductor so that whatever the you know electricity is flowing it has to flow perfectly without any sort of distortion in that and later being designed to support the weight of the cable you know like uh, or the large span. So, what will happen you see when those uh, transmission lines are passing through then we are keeping you know like the breaks in between so that we can maintain the constant gap in between those two wires and such a combination of material is generally termed as the compound lines because you see what will happen there are two bars ok and you see at both uh, both extreme ends of the bar there are the cables which are simply associated from the two extreme point. So, you see here that these two you know like the bar these two uh, copper 
proper lines are there and they are simply passing from uh, fixed distance and they are having a similar kind of you know like the current is passing that means whatever the load application is there in these two bar they are same. So, how they are behaving under the application of these force or the bar uh, or these currents uh, this kind of you know like analysis which we are going to discuss in this. So, consider therefore a compound bar consisting of a member and members let us say more than uh, two members each is having a different length and the cross sectional area and each being of a different material. So, you see now what we have we have the three different kinds of parameters first we have a different material and since it is a different material then and elastic deformation is there. So, obviously, the Young's modulus of elasticity, elasticity for different material is different. So, one is this second we are also taking the different cross sectional area. So, whatever the stresses will come though the force is constant because you are applied the force and we are assuming that this force is uniformly distributed all across these uh, uh, parts of uh, this compound bar. But the uniform uh, this uh, this cross sectional area is different for different bar. So, obviously, we need to be you know like uh, taken care that the stresses whatever the stresses are inducing in these bar they are different because again the Young's modulus is different. And then also here what we are considering uh, that since we have a different length we have a different uh, this uh, cross sectional area and we have a different material. So, if we want to calculate the deformation delta, delta is nothing but equals to P into L divided by A into E. So, here L is different, A is different, E is different. So, that is for sure that actually whatever the deformation will come individually in these com compound bar, the bars of these uh, you know like the compound one are definitely different. And then you see let uh, all the members have a common extension. If you know if you are bounded that they cannot go beyond this limit then definitely you can say that they have a common extension. And if I am saying that saying that this is x that is that means you see the load is positioned to produce the same extension in, in each member. Uh, even you see apart from all those things like they have a different length, different uh, area and the different Young's modulus. Though if you put the rigid uh, you know like extreme corners that means they cannot go beyond certain limits or you see they, they, they have if they want to expand they, they, they can expand up to this certain limit that means whatever the extensions are there in all you know like the parts of this particular composite bar they have to be same. So, and if you are assuming that this is x then you can see in this particular figure what we have we have this is you know like uh, the particular uh, this one extreme end which is simply you know like the rigid base and this is you see the uh, datum is there though all of these bars if you see here this bar the first bar the second bar even the third bar fourth and fifth bar all five bars are having different cross sections Dif uh, the area different cross sectional area different lengths and since they are having a different material so obviously they are uh, having a different uh, Young's modulus of elasticity. So, apart from those things if I am what I am doing here at the uh, another corner if I am keeping if you see this figure then you find that at the extreme uh, another extreme corner if I am keeping a rigid base that means you see this is rigid base is there and at this base if I am applying the load that means whatever the extensions are there this is a common extension as you can see here though you see we have n member but all, and all n members are having different cross sectional area with the different lengths and different material but they have a common extension and if i am assuming the uh, a common extension is x then we can simply analyze the total deformation of the compound bar so meaning is pretty simple that we need to assume that whatever the extreme uh, uh, these two uh, uh, these two extreme ends are there and if we apply the load on these two extreme ends whatever the deformation or the extension is coming out of from these compound bar it must be same and you need you can simply compute those things and once you compute those deformation you have the strain component from that. So, come to the real point that we have nth member and since you see you know like this is elastic deformation is there for all these members and they have a common extension x. So, you can simply calculate the Young's modulus of elasticity for nth member and this is nothing but equals to stress by strain and stress is nothing but since the applied load is there and the area of the area is there the a n divided by whatever the extension is there and if I am saying that the extension or whatever the deformation is there that is x n divided by the l n or we can say that the nth member will have you see you know like the Young's modulus of elasticity is nothing but equals to f n into l n divided by a n into x n or you can simply you know like compute since we are assuming that in all bars 
the deformation is same. So, again you can simply put the deformation equal for all this kind of bars. We can say that the force at the nth member is nothing but equals to Young's modulus of elasticity of nth member area of the cross sectional area of nth member into the deformation as we assume x divided by ln. So, here you see we have f n which is nothing but the force on the nth member as and all the ln are nothing but the cross sectional area and the length then whatever the radial load or we can say the total load which is towards the downward direction is there it is nothing but the sum of the all loads which is which are applying to the all members. So, now you come to this uh, radial load which is you know acted towards the downward direction is nothing but equals to sum of uh, the all uh, you know like the loads of uh, these bars then we can simply sum of those you know like uh, summation E and A and X divided by A L n. So, here you see you know like after keeping those what we assume that the length is different for individual bar, a cross sectional area is different for individual bar, Young's modulus is different for individual bar. So, if you sum up this let us say for first segment we have E1, A1, L1, for second segment we have E2, A2 and L2. So, cross individual you see you know like we are computing the properties. And after computing these property from all this segment, if you compute and multiply by x, because x is only we assume that the common deformation is there from this particular substance. So, by multiplying the x, you can get the total load, you know, like from all those bars which are the part of this composite beam. So, now you see from the, you know, like the previous equation, if we are keeping the force member for first, then F1 is nothing but equals to E1 A1 into X by L1 as I told you. And if I am keeping those things, then what I have, I have X, X which is deformation is nothing but, equal, nothing but equals to W divided by the summation of all these components that is summation of E and in the Young's modulus of elasticity cross sectional area for nth member divided by L and this uh, length of the nth member or we can say that the force in the first member is nothing but equals to E1 A1 by L1 or you can you know like multiply by this uh, whatever the x deformation is there that is nothing but equals to W divided by summation of E, e and A n divided by L, L, uh, this Ln. Meaning is pretty simple. If you know this deformation that how much deformation is there the combined deformation and if you know that actually you know like what the elastic uh, modulus is are there for that particular kind of thing you can easily get that how this force is distributed and this force di distribution in the different bars of the composite it depends on that how you see the ratios of you see because this is the total uh, radial load W and it is you know like divided by the nth me member and it is even multiplied by the first member. So, what we are doing here that the first member what the total components are there like E1, A1 and L1 and how they are you know and what is the ratio is there with the nth member. So, once we have the ratio of like uh, E1 by L1, A1 by An, Ln by A L1. So, if you have this ratio that actually how what the variations are there you can simply say that yeah this much fraction of W will be given to the F1. So, even it is, it is pretty logical that actually you know like uh, that what exactly the ratios are there in between these geometrical parameters as well as the material parameter. Once you have the ratio, the relative uh, coordination in between these uh, two components, you can simply say that yeah this can carry this much percentage of the total load. Therefore, you see each member carries a portion of the total load for sure which is proportional to E A by L value. That means, you see whatever the portion will go it is simply depends on the proportion of the Young's modulus of elasticity, the uh, this uh, cross sectional area and the length of uh, these, uh, these two members and whatever the proportional things are there corresponding W will be shared by these members. Now, you see here as we can see whatever the expressions it came you found that actually there was a ratio for calculating the force. So, again if we you know like rewrite those equations then we will found that as we discussed F1 is nothing but equals to you know like E1, A1 by L1 divided by the summation of all the nth part E and A and by uh, this Ln into the radial load. So, once you know those you see these uh, critical parameters it is pretty easy to find the F1 because W is well known to us that external applied load and if the length of individual member is same. Let us say if all these members are uniform, then you see you can you can simply you know like share like how many members are there divide by the 5. Because if they are same then you can say that F1 is nothing but equals to E1 L1 E1 A1 divided by summation of E n 
an that means you see it is summation of combined into w so either you can write en an or it is a summation of e into a since the length we assume that it is same that means all the bars are you see in the compound as we have seen the previous figure there were five different slag members are there so if they are equal in the length we can simply say that the whatever the force will come it is simply the ratio of e1 by an a, 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 a1 by an into the radial load thus you see you know like the stress member can easily you know like determine sigma 1 is equals to f1 by a so this is for first member you know like this uh, first member now you see you know like uh, correspondingly you can also calculate that what will be the sh shared force ratio the force is there in the other another coordinate but again the critical part which we have discussed here is what exactly the Young's modulus of elasticity is there because Young's modulus of elasticity is a property of a material. So, until unless if we cannot compare those things then we cannot say that actually what exactly the expansion is there of a material and then how these loads are to be shared means how the, the distribution of load is there because until unless if we do not know that there are you see the five different segments are there in a compound and if you do not know that which a bar is carrying which load then we cannot design safely because we need to give the different factor of safety for the different uh, bars for uh, just to design safely. So, that is what you see this uh, analysis is very very important in terms of the uh, you know like expansion that we are applying the same load that means you see whatever the external load is there it is same but inside those uh, bodies which are resisting this force how they are you know like shared these different proportion of the load and if we can you know like design perfectly these individual uh, you know like components by giving different material or you know like a uh, sufficient uh, support then only we can say that whatever the design is there it is, it is quite safe and corresponding factor of safety will come in the real design. Now, if we come to the determination of uh, a common extension of a compound bar always you see in order to determine these things what we need to do always we need to uh, check that whether it is convenient to consider it as a single bar of an you know like uh, this imaginary material or not actually but that means you see whether if, if we are considering that we have a one ductile material and other side we have a brittle material and if we are combine you know like uh, combining a bar then definitely you see whatever the extens whatever you see uh, uh, under the application of this tensile force whatever the extension will come in the bar it will not be uniform. So, if you are assuming the same thing like we have discussed in the previous section that uh, the different five you know like bars are there and you see you know like they even uh, they have a different uh, Young's modulus the common extension is there in this section where the two different materials and one material is ductile and one material is brittle we cannot say that the same you know like uh, this kind of analysis is valid for that or we can say that whatever the uh, this uh, x is coming that means the deformation is coming it cannot be uh, same and if you apply the same theory there then whatever the design will come it, it has to be failed because the ductile material cannot exhibit the similar kind of uh, you know like the extension uh, as the ductile material is considering means the brittle material has their own uh, brittleness in those kind of thing that means they cannot uh, you know like share the this uh, deformations or we can say you know like the percentage elongation under the application of force. So, if I am saying that you know if I, if, if I just want to like consider that uh, if I have a single bar with the imaginary material with an e equivalent or we can say the combined modulus E C then how we can you know like go for the deformation. So, here it is you see you know like certain assumptions which we need to make if you want to analyze those kind of structure in which the imaginary materials are there and we are we are assuming that we have a single bar. So, here it is necessary to assume that both extensions both the ex extension as well as the original length of the individual members are compound bars are they have to be same then only you can go for the analysis and the strain in all member will also be equal because you see if you know that if let us say if you are taking a copper bar and the steel bar or the uh, another is aluminum bar they are you know like uh, though ha they have the different young modulus but they are perfectly you know like uh, the ductile material and you can assume that they can exhibit you know like the common deformation if we you know like put the compound bar and if we apply the load at the extreme ends of these two uh, these two extreme uh, you know, like uh, of this particular bar. So, this assumption is perfectly valid for this kind of combination, but if we have a combination of brittle and ductile material then uh, I am pretty suspicious to get this kind of deformation from, for, from both of the material equally. 
So you see here, if I have a, you know, like this kind of bar where, you know, uh, like all these materials are ductile and we have, you know, like the common, uh, this uh, deformation. So if you have a common deformation, the length is same, obviously the stra strain must be same. So we have, you see, this kind of, uh, you know, like the constant phenomena. So if I want to calculate now the total uh, uh, load in the compound bar, it has to be F1 plus F2 means the total summation of the force on the individual bar. So, F1 plus F2 plus F3, F3 up to Fn, where you see all these uh, loads are shared by these different, different segments of a bar. So, F1 is shared by first element, F2 is shared by second element and let, let us, you see, if I am saying that the total five elements are there as we have seen in the previous figure. So, you see, you know, F3, F4 and F5 will be shared by the different segments of a bar. That means, you see, you know, like the total force is coming out from the uh, the summation of the bar as we have seen in the deformation also. The deformation as we have discussed in the previous section that deformation is coming by delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3. So, if you sum up those deformation, you will get the total deformation of the uh, this bar. So, here you see this assumption is quite valid, but you see like the force is nothing but equals to stress into area. So, again you see we need to keep that what exactly the area is. So, A1 plus A2 2 up to A n. That means you see whatever the individual cross sectional areas are there of the bars we need to calculate and the corresponding you see you know, like uh, the forces are coming as uh, this uh, because we are we are having F1 plus F2 to plus F3 up to this one. So, F1 as I told you this is stress into area. So, sigma 1 A1 plus sigma 2 A2 plus sigma 3 A3, sigma 4 A4 and sigma 5 A5. That means you see even if you can go up to nth, but here if, I, if, if you are using the 5 bar, then the total force will be of stresses, whatever the individual stresses are coming because again the stresses will never be same because of the material is different, area is different. So, corresponding the strains are, the stresses are different, but we are assuming that the strain, whatever the strain is coming that has to be same. So, after the applying this particular equation, what we have, we can simply get that the whatever the forces are coming, they are the summation of the individual forces or whatever the, stre the stress components are coming, they are nothing, nothing but equals to sigma 1 A1 plus sigma 2 A2 plus these things, where sigma is the stress in the equivalent single bar and uh, you know like uh, this, uh, whatever the strains are there is the same, but whatever the cross sectional areas are there, they are different for the different bars of a single unit this. So, now you see here what we have done, we have done that uh, we have a bar in which there are simp simple different segments are there. So, if you want to calculate that what exactly is happening with the Young's modulus of elasticity, because you see for all individual areas and for individual uh, this Young's modulus of elasticity, what we have, we have the different extension, we, we, we have we, we, like uh, we have to discuss that the different uh, deformation. But due to the certain assumptions that you see by keeping those blocks, uh, it cannot go beyond certain uh, length, uh, length and it is going up to this particular length and this length has to be uniform from all those bars. That means you see you know like we are assuming that the strain must be same. So, after applying this condition here, what we are getting here, we are having the sigma divided by this, uh, this epsilon. That means you see we have you know like uh, the stress divided by the strain into whatever the areas are there, they are different. So, we can say that the sigma 1 A 1 as we have discussed in the first case, but the epsilon must be same. That means, the default strain is same. So, what we have for different segments of a compound bar, sigma 1 A 1 by epsilon plus sigma 2 A 2 by epsilon plus whatever the components are there, the sigma nth into A nth divided by epsilon. You can say that that whatever the stresses are there, they are different, areas are different, but strain is same. So, this uh, equation is very much valid and for numerical problems, we are going to use this equation very much and you please keep, keep remember that actually how these equations are playing an important role to find out the different parameter in the compound bar. So, in this compound bar, we assume that uh, the whatever the strain component is coming that is constant. So, even we can calculate the equivalent uh, Young's modulus of elasticity and for that you see you know, like uh, as we discussed in the first line that it is equal to those components. So, the, if, if you are saying that the equivalent uh, Young's modulus of elasticity is E c, so just by keeping sigma by uh, this epsilon, the stress by strain is E c, will, it will give you the E c into this all summation of the area into this kind of you know like E 1, uh, this uh, sigma 1 by E is E 1 into A 1, sigma 2 by epsilon is E 2, sigma n by epsilon is E n and corresponding the area is there. So, you see here, though we have you see the different uh, Young's modulus of elasticity, and we know that we have only one condition which is same that is the common extension, we can calculate 
the equivalent Young's modulus of elasticity for that compound bar and which is nothing but equals to E1 A1 plus E2 A2 that means you see the first Young's mod uh, the uh, for first bar the Young's modulus into area concern plus the sec for second bar Young's modulus into the area concern up to you see if you, uh, sum for nth bar divided by if you divide by the area A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus up to An it will give you, you know, like the uh, equivalent uh, Young's modulus of elasticity for a compound bar or uh, we can say that it is nothing but equals to summation of E into R, E into A that means you see the Young's modulus of elasticity into the cross sectional area. If you sum up for individual component divided by sum of uh, the area, individual area, it will give you the equivalent uh, Young's modulus for the compound bar. So, with then you see the external load because we are applying the external load uh, at the extreme and the applied stress in the equivalent you know like bar can easily be computed with the you know like the stresses are nothing but equals to W by summation of A. That means you see the total load divided by the total area and total area we can simply compute by computing the A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus whatever the number of bars are A n. So, uh, correspondingly, uh, correspondingly the strain will come in the equi uh, this equivalent bar because we are assuming the same. So, it is the deformation x because it has a common deformation is there. So, x divided by the L. But you see here we have already assumed that whatever the strain component is there W by you know like uh, the summation of area and if you divide by you know like this stress uh, uh, by Young's modulus of elasticity equivalent means E c then you will get the common uh, we can say the strain or whatever the same strain is there for the compound bar which will be nothing but equals to the W divided by summation of area into the E c. So, you see with that we can simply get the common extension for all you see the compound bar though the individual extensions are different, but the common extension for this compound bar will be equals to W into L divided by E c into summation of area. That means you see the load applied the same length because we are assuming that the compound bar has some length that is L divided by the E c, E c is nothing but equals you know like there is the equivalent Young's modulus of elasticity for compound bar which can be you know like coming by the individual contribution of the E1, A1, E2, A2 divided by A1, A2, A3 like that and then summation of the area because you see you know like different area will play will play and different roles in that. So, we need to go for a summation of area. So, here you see the extension if you are concerning about a compound bar then only the key feature is that though the length you see we are assuming the same of uh, this particular uh, this uh, compound bar the applied load is same summation of area is same but the equivalent uh, this Young's modulus of elasticity will play a critical role to calculate the deformation. So, if you if you want to you know like uh, make the common deformation for an, a compound bar always we have to be carefully chosen uh, the Young's the uh, this uh, particular material of the bars. So, that whatever the Young's modulus is coming for all those bars the, it has to be you know like showing the common type of phenomena. So, that you see there, there should not be any ambiguity is there like if we are assuming one as a brass, one as a concrete and other side you see we have copper, we have you know like uh, the aluminum or we have the mild steel. So, you see this combination will disturb your deformation and whatever the deformation or we can say the extension is coming that does not have to be you know like uh, the same as we have you know like discussed here in this section. So, these that is why you see the equivalent uh, Young's modulus of elasticity is in a you know like critical path in this particular common extension. Then you see you know, like if you are discussing about a compound bar as we have discussed due to you know like whatever the compound bars are there and whatever the changes are there and if these changes are taken place due to the temperature change that means you see the thermal stresses are being set up in the compound bar and as I told you see you know like due to this temperature change only the normal stress stresses are being induced in the object like it, it has to be on you know, like extension or the compression then we have to be very careful as we discussed in the previous case that actually if you are you know like extend if you are simply applying the tensile load or if you are applying the compressive load then what will happen with the compound bar. So, again you see here we are taking the compound bar we are keeping in a high temperature zone and you see since the extension is there and if you are keeping you see the extreme ends of the bar is a constant or some heat flow is going on from the tubes so, as you see in the industrial application we will find that these uh, you know like uh, the heat uh, whatever the heat uh, hot, hot water or any coo uh, this coolant with the cold temperature if, if they are passing then sudden extension or the contraction will take place you know like in the different different tubes and if you are saying that these tubes are simply bounded from 
too extreme and then what will happen. So, this kind of analysis you see we are going to discuss in this particular section. So, ordinary material expand when heated or contract when cool, okay. Hence, increase in temperature produced in a positive thermal strain as you know like we discussed that uh, always due to you know like uh, these uh, thermal changes, if high temperature region is there, it is simply expanding. So, we have a positive thermal strain. If contraction is there, that means if a low temperature region is there, always material is try to squeeze in its own part. So, obviously, we have a negative thermal strain. So, thermal strain usually you see are reversible in the sense that the member returns to its original shape when temperature you know like uh, comes to its uh, original value or we can say if we are keeping you know like uh, from high temperature region to the room temperature then body comes to its uh, original shape then we can say that actually it has a reversible nature like we have the other processes as we have discussed in the thermo thermodynamic process like uh, we have isochoric process, isobaric process, isentropic process, all those processes which we assumed generally they have you know even isothermal process like that. So, they are you know like the reversible nature. So, here also since we are uh, assuming here that the elastic deformation is there and even you see due to this temperature change, if we are going up to the elastic deformation, so even if that object is there in the high temperature region and if you see we are cooling that up to normal room temperature, body you see whatever the thermal stresses are there in that and body deformation, if they come to you know like is if this body comes to in original shape then we can say that whatever the deformations are there, it is in the reversible nature and it is the elastic deformation. However, there are some material which do not behave in this manner. It's because you see some of the materials are highly sensitive toward the temperature, you know like because the microstructures are changing so rapidly due to the temperature change that, that we cannot say that whatever the strains are coming, they are either the positive, negative or they are exactly the same or we can say sometimes with the strain, you know like hardening is there or sometimes the due to the stress concentration, the cracks can be also developed on the surfaces of this uh, uh, material and then we cannot, you know like get the similar kind of behavior which we are, uh, you know like observing in uh, for the ductile material. So, you see these, you know like the metal differs from the ordinary material in the sense that the strains are related. Uh, just related non-linearly to the temperature because sometimes you see you know like uh, the different material is showing different different extension due to the temperature. So, we cannot say that it has a linear relationship uh, with the temperature just like we have seen in the elastic deformation that the stress is you know like the uh, stress is having a linear relationship with the strain. So, you see now if we just try to relate the non-linear behavior between the stress and strains or even the strains inside of a composite bar due to the temperature sometimes really it is highly irreversible in the nature and that is what you see sometimes you know like uh, when we are discussing about the realistic way like the turbine blades are there or you see you know like uh, uh, the different reasons of a boiler where the you know like the steam is passing always you will find that uh, at certain you know like the non uh, the no points uh, we have a different kind of extension while you see you know like at uh, uh, some uh, heated reason we have a different kind of reasons and if you, you know like come if this particular uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, high high pressure streams or you see the superheated streams if it comes to the saturated one then you see sometimes it is not coming uh, this uh, to the original shape of a boiler so, this kind of analysis is always be there in terms of two categories, one is the reversible nature, one is the irreversible nature. When a material is subjected, you know like to a change of the temperature, always there is a extension or there is a contraction. That means, you see what exactly happening, only there is a change of the length. So, you see we can say that whatever the deformation or the extensions are coming in an object, this is you know like depends on e, this epsilon t is equals to alpha times l into t where you see epsilon is nothing but the thermal strains. So, you see the, that means the strain due to the temperature change. So, uh, this epsilon t is equals to alpha that is the thermal you know like expansion of the material that what how this material is sensitive to the temperature and how you know like uh, if we are uh, talking about the room temperature or the what is the melting temperature and if we are going from the room temperature to the melting temperature of material then how you know like the microstructure of this uh, material will behave. So, this is alpha, L is the length and T is the temperature that actually we are uh, talking about which temperature and uh, if you are increasing the temperature then what will happen to the strain at a particular temperature. So, T is the temperature or we can say that you see if you want to calculate once you have the strain then you can calculate the stress. So, sigma T is nothing but equals to if you multiply the Young's modulus of elasticity with the strain you will get the stress. So, sigma T is nothing but equals to E times alpha T. So, you see here meaning is very simple that once you have the thermal strain you can go for the thermal stresses and uh, you can simply you know like uh, collaborate those things. So, if you see this diagram 
what you have you have one uh, this a uh, kind of cantilever one end of this uh, beam is simply rigid so that we cannot allow the expansion or the contraction of this bar in you know like uh, to expand or to squeeze uh, from this end. So, we have this free end and now if you uh, apply you know like the temperature change whatever the extensions are there this extension will take place along this particular length. So, we have this delta t and whatever the delta t is coming due to that we can simply measure the uh, the strain and this strain is coming here this is epsilon t. So, you see epsilon t is absolutely based on how much you see the deformation is there in an object divided by the original length of this. So, you see delta t divided by L will give you this t or we can say you see again. So, this is one way of calculating the strain or another way is you see alpha t whatever the deformation will come it is due to the uh, this epsilon t is nothing but equals to alpha into L into t. So, this can also be calculated since you see the alpha is this coming and alpha is a material property, L is the length of that and T is the temperature that at which temperature this beam is operating. So, you see here as we discussed that alpha is nothing but equals to the coefficient of linear expansion for a material. Again you see here we are assuming that since it is elastic deformation, so even the temperature due to the temperature effect also whatever the expansion or the contraction is there in the object, it is to be elastic. So, it has a that is why you see we are using the coefficient of the linear expansion of a material. L is the original length as I discussed and T is the temperature change. So, you see with an increase in the temperature always produce an increase in length as discussed or a decrease in temperature always results in the decrease in the length except in a very special cases where the material with the zero or negative coefficient of the thermal expansion is. Because if we if we have at alpha is zero or negative then we cannot uh, exhibit this kind of behavior due to the change of temperature. So, but generally you see if you are uh, talking about ductile material or the different kind of brittle material then they are having some sort of you know like the alpha which is positive. So, if you have a positive alpha then we can say that if the temperature is increasing definitely there is an extension in the bar and if there is a temperature decreasing then we have a contraction or the decrease in the uh, length of a bar. So, with that you see you know like uh, we need to be consider alpha very carefully because uh, whatever the temperature applying is there it absolutely depends on the alpha because alpha into L into T is there. So, how alpha will taking place or what the material property is there like you see Young's modulus of elasticity elasticity. So, correspondingly you see alpha is also at uh, you know like uh, 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 playing a dominant role while you see for temperature expansion is there. So, you see here you know like if you are talking about a free expansion of material which is you know like prevented by an uh, external force then a stress is to be set up in the material always because you see as we apply the load from external side if one side is free or one side is busy or you know like applied by that always some sort of the stresses are there and these stresses are always equal in magnitude to which you see you know like uh, which was produ uh, produced by you know like a bar which is allowing towards the extension and always extension is there towards the free you know like uh, length. So, whatever the you know like the extension is going on at the extreme corner we can simply calculate you know like the extension by the deformation that how much deformation is there at the free length as we as, as we have seen in the previous diagram and then by computing the computing the deformation in the uh, towards the free length uh, always we are what we are having we are having the total uh, this uh, strain that how much you know like uh, the strain is there the what is the change of length is there divided by the total length or if you are if you are keeping that uh, this uh, strain here and if you are having the L and if you are having T you can simply calculate the alpha and you see you know, you know like the alpha since uh, alpha is a material property once you have the alpha then you can say that yeah uh, if you apply this much temperature then this much ex uh, this much extension will be expected and if you go beyond this thing then we have a permanent set of deformation then we cannot you know like then we have a non-linear relationship between the stress and strain and this is a plastic reason is there. Therefore, you see the stress generated in the material by application of the sufficient force to remove the strain is always you know like suggested that you see if you want to apply the load you see and the uh, at outside you see some temperatures are there then it always plays and you know like the equivalent role as compared to you know like uh, you are applying the load and it is a room temperature is there. So, that means you see whenever these two conditions are there and if they are simultaneously apply on this bar then you have to consider both the, uh, the deformation by both ways. One is by uh, application of the force uh, you know like uh, and another one is due to the temperature. So, you see we need to apply the sufficient force to remove the strain if you see you know, like the stresses are being generated in the material due to the temperature change. 
So, now you see you know like uh, if you are talking about the stress which is nothing but uh, equals to you know like the strain into Young's modulus of elasticity. So, again you see we can say as far as uh, the deformation is there due to temperature change. So, stress is nothing but equals to E into alpha t. Consider now a composite bar you see you know like the compound bar we can say constructed from two different materials rigidly you know like joined together and for simplicity what we are doing here we are simply taking you know like this kind of structure in which these two extreme ends are there. So, both of you see both the outside material is a steel and middle one is a brass material. So, you see if we apply you know like if if we apply the stresses and the temperature change is there then always we have a thermal strain because whatever the temperature changes are there there is a certain deformation because if you raise the temperature extension is there and this extension extension is to be computed in terms of the thermal strain and these thermal stresses and if you are saying that this uh, you know like uh, if it is compounded uh, in a perfect way then whatever the deformation is coming this is same. So, thermal stresses are also be same. So, it may be added to those given by the generalized, generalized Hooke's law because of whatever the deformation which we are concerning here that is nothing but the uh, elastic deformation. So, for that you see you know like uh, again if you are applying that we have you know like the two mutually perpendicular uh, uh, the stresses are there and if they are applying in all three directions then we can simply compute the strain component in the x, y, z direction correspondingly you see if you are saying that if the deformation is there the x direction only due to the temperature change that means you see towards uh, the expansion is there it is in a normal stress component. So, the corresponding strain is there the thermal strain is nothing but equals to 1 by E into sigma x minus tau times of sigma y plus sigma z. So, you see here what we have we have a bar in which you see all three in the mutual directions the load is applying and due to that what we have we have all three stress component normal stress component sigma x, sigma y, sigma z and if you want to compute under the effect of this that ok what will be the stress the equivalent stress component then you see the extension is there in the x direction and in other two direction there is a contraction. So, with the using of the Young's uh, this uh, Poisson ratio we can compute the total impact of the like the deformation and or we can say the strain if you multiply the uh, 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 and if you have you see you know like uh, the stresses. So, once you have the you know if you multiply with the Young's modulus of elasticity you have the stresses. So, stress you see divided by the you know like the Young's modulus will give you the strain. So, sigma x minus this uh, Poisson ratio into sigma y plus sigma z which will give you the kind of you know like the deformation divided by which will give the kind of deformation due to the application of load plus you see we have alpha times dt that means this deformation due to the temperature change and this delta t will be the temperature change. So, correspondingly you see we can simply calculate the sigma x in the sigma y or epsilon y or epsilon z in the corresponding direction but again temperature this alpha dt alpha dt will play in the same role. So, you see while a normal strain a body are affected by the change of temperature shear strains are you know like uh, always to be notable. But because of the temperature change if any block or element changes then its size changes not in the same shape of the you know like uh, the perfectly but there is a shear strains are there and if you are saying that they have the same you know like uh, the width then we can say that the shear strain cannot be changed. So, shear strains shear strain must be same for a compound strain because we are assuming that whatever the deformation is going it cannot go beyond a certain depth or uh, whatever the deformation is there it is same for all those components like as we have discussed in the x y or in this sigma x sigma y or sigma z bar because of this particular alpha. So, you see in general the coefficient of expansion of any two material forming the compound bar will be the different so that as the temperature rises each material will attempt to expand by different amounts. That is pretty simple as I told you that alpha is nothing but the alpha is the function of the uh, material. So, as you change the material like uh, if you are using aluminum, if you are using copper, if you, even if you are using the steel and brass all materials are having different kind of microstructures as we discussed BCC, FCC or HCP then definitely they are going to uh, you know like uh, exhibit a kind of different expansions or the contraction due to the temperature. So, we are getting you know like the different alphas for different uh, kind of material and whatever the figure which I am going to show you it shows the position uh, to which the individual material will expand if they are completely free to uh, you know like towards the expansion. So, that means you see you know like uh, there is no rigid boundations are there at these two corners and if the, these corners are free and if you apply the temperature definitely there is an extension is there and if I am saying that this extension is LT due to the temperature then probably you can see this diagram that we have you see you know like uh, this extreme end this is the original bar. In this bar you see we have the uh, cantilever kind of thing 
at one end is absolutely rigid, we cannot allow any extension or the contraction from this end, but one end is free. So, it can go up to any extension of this bar and we have two different material as I shown in the previous diagram that outer out, outwards two bars are from the steels and inner bar is from bar, uh, this brass. Now, you see if uh, we change the temperature and because of you see the thermal expansion, you know, the linear thermal expansion alpha of brass is more than the alpha of steel. So, obviously, the extension in the brass will be more because you see this alpha is more. So, it will you know like expand fastly or rapidly due to the temperature change. So, as you see we are you know like going for a certain temperature change then we will find that this uh, after you see expanded position members to uh, you know like uh, uh, towards the free direction then you see it showing that the steel is moving from this corner to this corner that means due to this alpha s it is expanding up to that. But the brass is right from this point to this point it is expanding rapidly fast because of this alpha b. So, alpha is you know like the linear coefficient of expansion is always playing in a key role for you know like kind of expansion and if you see you know like uh, if I just want to go for a compound bar then I need to put you see the extra you know like uh, this uh, expansion of the steel just to make the common deformation. So, this is a compound bar. So, in a realistic way the deformation is different as it seems because of the different alpha. But if you want to make a compound bar or a composite bar, then the deformation has to be same. So, you see this kind of information is always essential for making a bar that actually how they are expanding and how, the, how they are behaving. And since this behavior is absolutely based on this alpha, so we have to be very careful that actually how this alpha is to be chosen or how, how material is to be chosen. So, as a consequence, you see there is no stresses being generated in a statically determined structure when one or more members undergo a uniform temperature change. So, if you see there is a uniform temperature change is there, then we can we can say that whatever the thermal strains are there, they are well set, they are very well equal and since this alpha is you know like because as we have seen that whatever the change of temperature is there, this alpha is a key role. So, if you are saying that the it is a uniform temperature change is there, we can say that uh, this whatever the statistical uh, this determined structures are there, there is no stresses are being uh, generated in those kind of structures. So, see if we, if in a structure or a compound bar the free expansion or co contraction is not allowed then member becomes a statically indetermined. Means you see you know, like if statically determined is there then you see in those kind of structure uh, we are allowing uh, to expand or contract from a free end. But if you are talking about a statically indetermined, in, indeterminate uh, uh, structure then always you see it is simply rigidly bounded and there is no free space is there for a kind of expansion or the uh, this contraction. So, now you see as we discussed uh, that uh, if we have you know like the diff, uh, this uh, whatever the expansion is there and if you want to compute the difference of the free expansion uh, lens or we can say the free lens because the expansion is there towards the free length only we can go easily for you see this alpha b into l whatever the, uh, the change of length is there into t minus alpha s because whatever the steel components are there into l into t or we can say that alpha b minus alpha s into l into t. So, this uh, difference of the linear coefficient of the expansion will give you that actually what is the equivalent or what is the free expansion is there the because of the change of that into the total uh, the whatever the length is there or the temperature applied is there. So, it absolutely depends on you see what the differences are there in between the real property of the expansion of brass as well as this uh, steel component. So, now you see if two materials are now rigidly joined as a compound bar and subjected to the same temperature rise each material will attempt to expand its a free length obviously towards the outer uh, outer side, but each will be you know like attracted by the movement of each other because you see you know like uh, the interaction is always be there in between those things and it is a simple uh, this outside uh, force is or we can say the temperature is same. So, they will always uh, you know like affected by the movement of uh, each other and the higher coefficient of expansion alpha as we have discussed alpha b is greater than alpha s ex uh, this uh, expansion material will be therefore, seek to pull the steel you know like from uh, up to its uh, free length position and co uh, consequently you see you know like we will get the composite bar at the end in the same way. So, you see with the same thing if the lower coefficient of expansion is there like the steel will try to hold the brass back. So, you see there is you know like the action is going on from the brass and the reaction will be there from the steel and they just try to hold in their own position and that is what we can say that you know like uh, we have a kind of uh, common 
extensions are there in both of the structure. So, if you want to calculate the free length, then always it is there the extension of the steel because some sort of the extension is there and if you apply you know like the compression is there then the compression of the brass which will give the difference of free length as I told you alpha b minus alpha s is there. So, if you do that kind of uh, you know like the analysis always it will give you the real free length. So, you see here in the second conclusion we can say that the tensile force, uh, force applied to the short member by a long member is equal uh, you know like in the magnitude to the uh, this uh, compressive force applied to the long member by a short member. It is pretty you know like uh, the philosophical uh, theory is there that if uh, the compression force is applied by a longer member to a short me shorter member is always having an equal mem you know like uh, the magnitude as we are talking about a tensile force, force from the short member to a long member or we can say tensile force in the steel is equal to the compressive force in the bar or uh, you know like if you simply go in the later on side it is this L, sigma s l by e s plus sigma b l by e b this extension or the stresses in this stresses in brass and steel will give you alpha b minus alpha s as we discussed into l into t or we can say that the sigma s this extension the stresses in tensile part into a s will be equal to the compression in sigma b into a b. So, in this lecture you see we discussed about the real phenomena of the thermal stresses that how thermal stresses are being set up in the structure and how they are playing a key role especially when you see the uh, this load uh, application is there and the temperature effects are there and how we can say that if we have a compound bar then we can calculate you see you know like uh, the stress and the strain if a common strain is there then what are other, other uh, this uh, other parameters are there and how these loads are to be distributed in the common uh, you know like segments of uh, this particular bar. So, now you see uh, you know like uh, this analysis is very very important as you see in the you know like the real application that all uh, if we have a compound bar and all the members of the compound bar you know subjected by the different kinds of stresses then how we can say you know how we can analyze those things and what uh, what are the real phenomena uh, with the stress and strain and with this particular Young's modulus of elasticity is there and in that also if the thermal stresses are there then how these uh, alpha the lean expansion of uh, the coefficient is playing a key role. So, this kind of uh, you know like discussion uh, we, we discussed in this lecture and in the next next lecture now we, we are going to analyze that actually if uh, these temperature effects are there and if we have you know like the composite bar then how we can go for the individual force component and how we can sum up those things. So, this kind of relations we are going to discuss in the ne next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.